spilled water on my shirt. That's great. Okay. It's been so long since we've done a, um, full makeup routine together. So long, too long. So we're going to do it now. Uh, starting with skincare. This is the Shantikai bio lifting serum. Thank me later. This stuff is literally youth in a bottle. I don't know. It just lifts the whole thing. Makes my skin feel so happy. Um, this needs a little moisturizer after the serum. Uh, this is the 24 karat gold firming moisturizer. Also for Shantikai. Love anything firming. Firm away. I saw this hilarious video on TikTok about how influencers put on their face cream. And it's like, <laughs> like wrap all the product away and then gently press. So do the real thing, <laughs> but do press, press, don't drag. Give that skin as much of a helpful head start as you can. Um, eye cream, an absolute must. This is uh, the Tata Harper super kind eye cream just to create a little extra moisture on that delicate eye area. And it also is really nice to have as a base layer when I end up having to sweep away any fallout from eyeshadow. Um, did I get it all in? So now we've created this luscious, juicy, dewy skin. And we're going to take it all down um, with this Vanish Airbrush Primer. This is from Hourglass. And this just creates that poreless finish. Um, like a great little canvas for your skin, makeup, and all that good stuff. Honestly, I know it seems silly to add dewiness and then add matte, but I do think that it it's a process that we have to trust. And I find that like the the finished effect has like a a, a luminescence and a glow from the inside without being shiny. So it's worth it. <laughs> okay. So for skin, I'm going to do a combination of a couple different products. I will start with Wander Beauty Nude Illusion. I am the color light medium and I kind of just do my fun little face paint situation, little self love, <laughs> not essential. <laughs> um, and then to build in a little warmth, this is the Charlotte Tilbury. I can't even tell you what it's called because I've worn off the label. And this is the color five, which is definitely not my color. I think I would need maybe a four, maybe a 4.5. But um, when I went to Sephora to buy this, this was all they had. Uh, so I decided to take a risk on it. And honestly, I really like it, even though. I like the formula of it so much, even though the color may not be my perfect selection. Just a damp beauty blender sponge of some kind and mush it all in. Oh, look at, but here you can see it just create, I mean, it's no wonder that Charlotte Tilbury formula is so beloved. It really has this spectacularly photoshopped look to it. And I am such a fan of the Wander Beauty formulation too. It really, um, I think has like, it just ha creates a really nice, um, even coverage without being heavy. Like you can see my skin tone doesn't look covered up. I just have a really even finish on it now. And I like that. I want to see my skin. And I do like how highlighting that wonder formula is too. Under my eyes, especially. And then I just sort of sweep what's left on the sponge over my eyelids as kind of a, a primer for the eyeshadow. Okay. Um, I will address with my hair later. What look do we want to do? I'm feeling like a, I'm feeling like it's a tart palette kind of day. Um, I'm going into this color sand, which is pretty much my everyday, like all over wash just to create a nice bright palette for whatever I do next. Um, I saw a really pretty routine for that, uh, sort of like Jane Birkin, really sixties mod look, but, but fresh, like barely there makeup. Um, 
that was all about so they basically create like a nice fresh base like this and then they do with a bronzer they do like a like a whole rainbow look here that doesn't really get blended out too much um my only problem with the way i think that look would be on me is that they then do like a very tight line not a lot of build out not a lot of like winged up look and i need a winged liner i need it um but i do i am considering i in fact not just considering i will play with the line the sort of rainbow thing they did okay if i can find my freaking ugh, bronzer okay this is laguna beach nars matte bronzer and they did it with kind of a like more precise brush something packed and condensed like this one and they they really left this kind of like precise arch i don't know if i'm gonna like I, you know what sometimes you see things and you're like oh that looks so good on them and then you start to do it on yourself and it's just <laughs> you got to take liberties you got to make it your own you know well whatever i'm getting the position in here and i used to really not play very much with defining the eye socket but i have to say putting shadow creating shadow creates highlight. So by virtue of having this darkening here, it makes the brightness on the top of the lid that much brighter, which opens the eye up and it gives you that wonderful, fresh, bright-eyed, doughy-eyed look, which we love. And then I'm just going back with that same fluffy brush I'd originally put that um, creamy wash over the lid with and just going to blend this out because like I said, I was inspired, but I got to make it look right on my face. <sighs> and I do, I just love like multi-purpose products, like, or at least finding multiple ways to use the same product. So I'm going to put this cheek, I'm going to put this um, bronzer on my cheeks later, and it will obviously create a lovely matched and married tone between my cheeks and my eyes, which we like. Is that good? That looks nice and blended. Okay. Eyeliner. So you guys know my favorite way to do eyeliner was, and I've shown it to you before, and it's it, honestly like for everyday looks, it kind of still is, which is you go, you find like the widest part on your eye, which for me is here, the biggest distance is here. And starting from there, you kind of draw a line straight out. And what that does is it, because you've gone to the large, the, the highest part of your eye, creating a line out from there automatically lifts the whole eye up, which is amazing. And I would venture basically fail proof. Um, and it's a great place to start uh, if you're learning how to do a, like a winged eyeliner look. So again, start here and draw the line straight out and then just sort of fill it in along the edge. One of the tricks that I started to play with um, on set at The Good Dish was instead to create a really like defined upward uh, eyeliner which, because if I continue my eye shape all the way out, sometimes where it finishes has a tendency to have the line, like start to pull my eye down a little bit. And this is a way to really guarantee that like gorgeous cat eye. So with a liquid liner, this is the Dior show on stage liner. I basically close, you know, I used to do it when my eyes open, but I find like the angle was wrong. So with my eyes closed, I, sort of draw this upward line so that you can guarantee that when you close your eyes, when you open your eyes, when you close your eyes, you have that like upward look um, to the liner. And then from there, I start to build out the liner itself. And you can go as tight to the lash line or like build up as much as you want. I sort of give myself a base of liner that I then build from once I put my lashes on because once you put the lashes on, it can change the shape of the line a little bit. Oh, okay, I'm gonna stop talking while I do this because it's a precise art. <laughs> okay. Okay. Look at that. I know, you can't wait to try it. Now the hardest part, you gotta make the other side match. Good luck. 
Um, okay. Close eyes. And then just kind of connect it down to the lash line. And you know, unless you're very lucky, your eyes are probably slightly different shapes. Um, and therefore not perfectly symmetrical, which just means that you are going to pay attention and make the eyeliner on each side match correctly the shape of your eye while also being almost the same. So they are synchronous across the face. And let's see, how are we looking here? Are you happy? Do they look almost synchronous here? Yeah, I think for the most part, I think we're good. Okay, we can always, we'll, we'll tinker from here. Um, I like to set it with a dark brown shadow. This is from MAC Give a Glam and just like a nice fine angled brush. Any will work. And just use that to, first of all, warm up the line a little bit, blend any parts that are that maybe like the skin on your lid moved and so it looks a little um, irregular or like there was a gap that all errors can be corrected which is lovely oh, see like right here see there's that weird like kind of break in the line nothing powder can't fix and I kind of like to use it to blur the edge of the line too because even though I use powder formula um, liner a lot more now. I still kind of like that diffused look that you get when you have like a smudgy pencil. So I use the powder to get me that a little bit by just being kind of fluffy here at the edge of the line. Fluff, fluff, fluff. I messed up this liner. So all you're gonna do is take a tiny bit of your um, eye cream with, or you know, makeup remover if you have that, with your Q-tip. And gently, so as not to damage your eye skin, <laughs> just give it a little cleanup, which you may want to do anyway, because it creates such a beautiful fine tipped point. Okay. What else um, should we do first? Let's set, let's do mascara and then we can let that dry while we um, finish up the face. So this is the YSL formula lash clash. Very black, very rich and bold formula. I love how like thick and voluminous and lush this makes my lashes. So I go one coat on this side, then without going back to the tube, other coat on this side because that slight drying of the formula gives such a better curl and lift to the lashes. So resist the temptation to keep dipping back into the tube in between the lashes unless and um, sides, unless you absolutely need to, if you feel like you've used up all the formula that was on the wand. Okay, second coat, second coat. Okay, and then take what's left on the wand and just use it to Give a little color to these bottom lashes. And if you get anything that's too clumpy, you might like that look. But if you don't, <laughs> you can just sort of run your um, Q-tip over it and it'll pick up any pieces and help separate those lashes again. Plus you can get anything that's underneath the eye accidentally. Okay. Great. Now we're gonna let the lashes dry while we do the rest of the face and then we'll come back and do the fakies, the falsies. <laughs> um, okay, so to build a little dimension on the face, first thing I'm gonna do is add some translucent powder. This is um, Veil Translucent Setting Powder from Hourglass. Just grab a nice fluffy little rabbit tail, 
brush and I really focus the mattifying effect underneath my eyes because that is where I find when the light catches and you're shiny, you look the most tired. So chin and T-zone, obviously the, the usual, but under the eyes, I think is really important too. And you just, you want enough powder to keep the um, shine down, but not so much that it starts to look powdery and old and crepey. Um, okay, back to our bronzing powder. And I use a blush brush for my bronzer because I don't feel like having a million different brushes and you can create a lovely sculpting effect using a brush like this. So I just sort of run it into the temple here and mainly focus the depositing of the color in that sort of hollow part of my cheek to create lots of cheekbones. Then, once that's nice and worked in, see it automatically creates just like a whole different highlight of your face. I dip a little bit more in and I do the same thing right along the hairline. And this is great to help you create no space between where your makeup begins and where your hair begins. Part of the power of illusion is you can't have any cracks. It's all got to blend together. Okay, and there's a little under the jawline. Again, creating that shadow to then accentuate the highlights. Now for a little cheek glow. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna, I don't always contour my nose, but I feel like doing it today. Um, you can either take the same eyeshadow, see I'm a multi-purpose person, take the same eyeshadow brush and just kind of gently place a line on the outside of the bridge here. Then you wanna continue it up into the eyebrow and then just kinda of create a lovely little shadow here at the tip, which lifts that part and it gives it lots of nice definition. And then um, a little bit here, right over the ball of the nose too. Or, hold on, you can actually, don't worry, I'm gonna blend it. Take the same blush brush we just used for highlight and then I just kind of pinch it into this flat shape and use that to place the line. Mm -hmm. Two options for you. And then you just need to go back and kind of blur it all together so that it's not obviously drawn on. And if you want, you can actually take your same um, blender sponge that you originally put the foundation on and you just kind of work your way over the um, newly applied contour and that helps to blur it all in. Okay, um, to put a little bit of highlight back on, I will take, if I can find it, aha. This is the NARS Medium Custard Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I love this under my eyes to really just blow out any under eye bags or darkness of any kind. And then I also run a little up and down the bridge and just like a tiny touch here at the ball um, to really give it that gorgeous, like refined highlight experience. Are we good? Are we good on this? I think so. Create a little cheek glow. I like this Chantecai Liquid Lumiere in the color. It's an anti-aging cheek illuminator in the color Luster. Now watch what happens. To add a little bit of that glow and also to kind of blend your blush into your 
under eye color without being like too harsh. I know over blushing is a thing right now. Everyone's obsessed with it. I haven't decided if I love it or not. I can't tell if it makes me look burned and if that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, but I do like a glowy flush. And then just to accentuate that pop a little bit, this was a product my mom turned me on to. This is the YSL Couture Matte Stain. Doesn't say a color, which is problematic. And actually you can use it on your lips too. Watch this. And it smells like raspberry and roses. And see, there you go. You got a big old <laughs> seriously blushed out look. It does make you look alive. It does make you look very like <laughs> caught on a spring day, but um, <laughs> I just haven't decided yet. We're gonna play. Okay, there's that. Let's do the lashes quickly. Lashes. Um, duo uh, eyelash glue. I put just a tiny dollop on my hand. Then get your tweezers and get your falsies. I am using the Ardell Demi Wisps in 318 Black. These are my faves. And then I do need a mirror to do this one. So you kind of just drag it through the glue and you can let it dry like 10 seconds, which just helps it stay better once you place it onto your roots of your lashes. And I connect everything right onto that roots of the lashes location, except for the very end of the lash, which I kind of leave like off just a little bit to help really arch up that lift. Other side. Okay. Ooh. Just sort of press it into those lash areas that where the band doesn't always naturally want to stick okay we'll let that dry and we're going to just run over that line one more time with the um, black liquid liner just so that everything is seamless and connected we will finish brows really fast um so for this i'm going to start with this is the um Chantecai Full Brow Perfecting Gel, but you can use, I love the Boy Brow from Glossier. I like, um, there's a Tom Ford one I use a lot that I like that has a bit more color to it. And this, I'm just gonna sort of press or brush all the brow strands up. And then once they're all up and combed, then I kind of follow the shape of the brow just so that it's, it's, combed but not crazy and i kind of just push it down like that i don't know i just like that look um this is the jones road light brunette pencil for brows and i sometimes will use this just by itself but i if i have done the gel like i just did i kind of just use this pencil to fill in if there's any places where it looks like thin maybe um and the nice thing about this formula this jones road formula is it has um fibers in it so it really like it thickens while it colors which is a really nice all-in-one okay you can take your same sponge and just define that outer edge what's that Okay, a uh, little lip liner, why not? This is Beige Natural from Sisley, and I kind of color in this outer edge. Okay. 
and then collar over the Cupid's bow. create a lovely full pout. And I put the um, blush stain on so I could show you how pretty that is. And I kind of just like how it looks here, but the color I've been using the most right now is this Bite Lipstick um, Power Matte so Power Move Soft Matte Lipstick. This is the color Pluot, which is almost exactly the tone that I have on right now, bizarrely. Um, I also love Chai. That was my original purchase, the color Chai. And I just got the color Sugar Buns. Mwah. Chef's kiss. I love it. Okay. Um, that will be my, my lipstick line. Chef's kiss. <laughs> okay. So I think, my friends, that we've done it. I think we're in good shape. I'm going to do the liner really fast. And just make sure, see, there's like like that tiny band you can see where the um, lash applied. Oh my gosh, could I possibly have a dirtier mirror? Can I? Oh man, this is, this is, hold on one second while I swipe this mirror so I can actually see myself in it. Hello, hello, get, get, get closer. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, now, Using my black liner, I will just marry that band onto the lash line. Make sure it's all connected and lovely. And then sometimes you want to draw the line a little bit higher just based on where the lash ended up applying. I do see that I have a little bit of fallout. So just a clean um, Q-tip is your best friend to make all that, you know, any two, any line that's too thick, you can take it down. Any place that's blurred, you can refine it. It's your number one move. And I think my friends, I might add a tiny bit more get, um, mattifying powder. Um, just over this part of my face. And I think with that, we are done. I'm gonna go figure out what's happening with this. I'm gonna go tame the beast, but I hope you give it a try and enjoy a lovely lifted liner and a Pluot pout. And um, happy Friday.